All right, so turn to Romans 16, 25. We're going to finish up the fourth part of what we've been doing with the revelation of the mystery. And last week we hit the mystery plus went back and actually we focused on prophecy last week and we went back to the beginning, picked up Israel there, starting with Abram, Abraham, forward, painted that picture all the way up through the prophets and so forth. And um, so today we're going to put a, uh, going to kind of put a bow on it. You know, we've been teaching from the um, the verse here of Romans sixteen twenty five and of course twenty six, and so we're gonna we're gonna start there this morning, and we're gonna we're gonna build around this purpose. That's what we want to see this morning because what we teach here we know is different because we're teaching the Bible as it's stated, to whom it's stated. What condition, you know, what time, you know, are you in when you're, when you're in the Bible? And I was taught that in religion. Now, it's extremely important that you know who's speaking, who's being speaking to, and when, what condition, and just throw it out the window when you, start, <laughs> when you start teaching. But no, but we stick with that. So we've realized some things by understanding the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret, but now it's made manifest. So we, we understand some things there, and it's helped us to understand our Bible, to, to make a Bible that's, I mean, there's a lot here, right? To make it more understandable, to make it uh, to where you know who you are and where you are, your identity in it. And so that is the, uh, the blessing of knowing the truth and understanding the truth is to understand who you are in the truth, right? So um, let's go there, Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. So we dealt with Paul's gospel in the very first session and we dealt with the mystery, the body of Christ, I think, in the second session. And then we handled verse 26 last week, the prophecies, right? The scriptures of the prophets. So um, the very first teaching that we did on this, I told you some people read 25 and 26 without putting the word and in there. So let's read it again. Now to him that is a power to establish you. So the subject matter is what? Be established. Okay. To establish you according to my gospel, number one. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, number two. Which was kept secret since the world began, but is now made manifest. And the third way to be established, right, by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. So Paul gives the believer there three ways to be established. And that is the gospel, his gospel, the preaching of Christ according to Revelation and Mystery, and by the scriptures of the prophets. All right, sound redundant, but sometimes we need to be redundant. So today we're going to see some verses that we've seen before, but we're going to deal with the purpose. What is this all about? Why is it that God revealed a mystery to Paul? Why do you have 13 books that start with Romans, go through Philemon? Why? What is that about? Is that the same thing that was being said, being taught? You know, we've, we've heard people say that Paul was a heretic. We've heard people say that Paul was egotistical. We've heard, even heard people say that Paul should be kicked out of the Bible. Yeah. Well, Martin Luther of the Great Reformation, he had a problem with James because he had seen Romans chapter 4, chapter 5, that it was by faith and faith alone and Christ alone. But James was teaching something different. So he wanted James thrown out of the Bible. Well, how do you reconcile the two? You don't. You, you leave them where they ought to be, right where God's got them, and you understand there's two different programs, and there's a purpose for the two different programs. There's a purpose for you, and there's a purpose for Israel and the earth, right? And so prophecy has its purpose, and mystery has its purpose. And that's what we're going to look at today. So now turn with me over to the book of Acts in chapter 3. And I'm not going to keep you long uh, today because last week I went over, I did 53 minutes and I don't like doing that. I got myself out of that and I've gotten to where I cut off about 40, 45 minutes. So if I go over 45, I feel like I've done a, a bad thing. 
So um, here we're going to read in um, chapter 3, very familiar, uh, chapter 3, verse 18 of Acts. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all His holy prophets that Christ should suffer, He has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And He shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. Now, Romans 16, Paul said he was preaching Christ according to the revelation of mystery, which had been kept secret since the world began. Peter here is preaching that which was spoken, right? Made known since the world began. Different. Two different things, right? So Peter is preaching prophecy, and you guys know this, I know that. So we're going to get into some other stuff, you know. Peter is preaching prophecy which is whatever church is doing this morning because of what's going on in Israel. They're preaching prophecy this morning. They're trying to bring the world to an end, bring Christ back, set Him up on His throne of glory, and somehow scrounge the rapture in there, however that works. So, prophecy, mystery. This was unknown by the Scripture. You see that? Unknown. And this over here was known. This is what God had spoken. This is what God had made clear. Right? So the prophets had talked about Christ suffering on the cross, and they talked about the glory that would follow over there. You read that over in Peter's writings, Hebrews through Revelation, the glory that should follow. When Christ comes back to earth and sets up on that throne, and there's 12 thrones in the earth, and they're occupied by the 12 apostles, Jesus Christ being the head, and they're going to be the nation that rules over the nations. Amen. All right. So that Paul talks about the mystery that was unknown, which is a body of believers that God has been forming since the calling out of the Apostle Paul, which is going to go up and they're going to meet Christ in the air. We've talked about that many times. We call that the rapture. You say, well, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Okay. We call that the catching away. All right. So this is the catching away of the saints, the body of Christ. And this was unknown. Right? So everybody still with me? So there's a purpose though. There's some purpose in which God had made this known. There's some, some purpose in which God had made this unknown, but chose to reveal it in the due time to the due time apostle. Now this is the thing that throws people off, as Elizabeth alluded to earlier. They don't have a clue right now what's going on in the Middle East, because they don't really know what God's doing in the Bible. So if you know what God's doing in the Bible, you, you can have some understanding to what God was doing. Yeah. What God's going to do, but what God is doing right now. And the blessing that we have, we have all seen what God is doing right now. God is offering His free grace unto the world. And He is telling people through instruments, okay, through people, hey, Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the Scripture. He was buried. And He rose the third day according to the Scripture to justify you freely of all things which the law of Moses could not have done. And all He's asked you to do is to believe Him and receive Him by faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's what God's doing. Yeah. But others are saying, no, you got to do it this way. you got to do that. you got to do that. So, but there is a purpose. I want you to turn over and let's look at Ephesians in chapter 1. Ephesians in chapter 1. <clears throat> I love to hear from these people where the light comes on. You know, they're, you know, they're watching a video of somebody, and all of a sudden the light comes on to this truth, and they're going, oh my. And when they call you up, the joy that's in their heart that they have seen the truth. It's a blessing to talk to those people. And I try to take every one of those calls that I can possibly take because I never get tired of hearing about it. It actually makes me think about when I first came to the truth. You know, so look here now in, um, in uh, first, or excuse me, Ephesians and chapter 1 and verse 9. Now I want you to focus on two words as we read these verses. Purpose, okay, the word purpose. I'll tell you what, I'll do you a favor. 
I want you to think about the word purpose. And I want you to think about the word will. Right? Purpose and will as you read these verses. Look at verse 9. Heaven made known unto us the mystery of his will, will according to his good pleasure, which, which he has what? Purpose. Purposed in himself. So, the mystery of this will that God is going to show you in verse 10. Okay? It's his will and it was for a purpose. It was his purpose. Okay? He did it purposely. <laughs> Right? And it's something that was promised before the world ever was. So, as we've talked about before, if it was promised before the world ever was, it wasn't promised to a man. It's the Godhead. Right? So, look here at verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and those which are in do you see the two spears? Yes. Okay, now. Now you see a purpose. You see a purpose for the mystery. Because what was spoken by the prophets concerned what? Earth. Right. What's come by the mystery is heaven. Oh, now the picture comes clear. Right? Heaven and earth. You've got a purpose. God said, it's my will. You know why it's God's will? I'm going to show you why it's God's will. Go to Genesis 14. Genesis 14. I'll show you why this is God's will. Genesis chapter 14. When you get there, go to verse 19, I believe it is. Genesis chapter 14, verse 19. She's speaking here of Abraham, and he's speaking of the high priest here. Um, I think you read about Melchizedek here. You read of it. In verse 19, though, he said, And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of what? Amen. Oh, so there is a God that is the possessor of both heaven and earth. There is a little g in your Bible. We talked about him this morning. And he is the God of this world in which we know right now. Right? So, do you see the dual purpose of God? The dual purpose of God for revealing the mystery that he gave to Paul, which was formed in God and promised in God before the world ever was, that God would take back what Satan had corrupted. It was God's will and God's purpose that he would take back heaven and he would take it back earth. He made what he was going to do in the earth known by the prophets, but held a secret in himself until revealing it to Paul of what God was going to do with the heavens. Now, your purpose is in this circle right here to be a member of the body of Christ and being in that body, your purpose is to walk according to the doctrine that God gave Paul and that you're going to go to heaven when you leave here and you're going to feel, uh, fulfill God's promises to the heavenlies and you're going to fill the positions that he puts you in. Don't ask me what you're going to be doing because I don't know. Right? But that's where you're going. Alright, so then Paul said... In Ephesians, back there, I want you to read the verse again. It's important sometimes we think we know a verse and we'll just gloss over it. Oh, I've heard that a million times. Well, let's read it slowly and look at it. I want you to notice verse 9. Having made known unto us, now you have the will. Remember I said keep your mind on that? But there's something in front of it. It's the mystery of his will. You get it? So the, the God's total will of heaven and earth, there's a part of it that was a mystery. You see it? All right. Now, redundant again. Go back over 1 Corinthians.
All right. Chapter 2, very familiar, verse 7. And here was the thing. See, the mystery of his will there in 1 9. All right. How many people do you know that understand the mystery of God's will? They're probably a handful, right? That understand that God has set this prophetic nation to the side and he's been doing this for his own purpose and his own will. Right? So that in the ages to come, when the fullness of times, he might gather both all into one, even in what? Christ. He's the possessor of what? Heaven and earth. It's all his. I'm going to show you that again. All right. So look here, two seven. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So God had a will and a purpose, and He hid this right here. That was a mystery. We've said it a million times. And the princes of this world, including Satan himself, including the religious leaders of Israel, and so on and so on, they would have never put Jesus Christ on this cross to have him killed, right? So God, by this, holding this back into himself, revealing it to Paul, the due time apostle to the church, the body of Christ, has now opened up his manifold wisdom. You know, manifold means more than one, right? It's multiplicity. Okay? So the manifold wisdom of God is that God is the possessor of heaven and earth, and He is going to recapture both heaven and earth in all righteousness. Okay? In this kingdom over here, eternity to come, there's going to be no sin in either realm. God is going to take away. He is taken away by the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the church, the body of Christ. We're going to go into the heavens, there'll be no sin, right? They're going to go over here, and we're going to all go out into eternity, and we're not going to have sin, right? It's going to be done. It's going to be going away, right? You're not going to, you're not going to hurt in a body of Adam, right? You're going to have a body fashioned like unto his glorious body, amen? You're not going to be in the body of Adam any longer. That's what we're waiting on. You know the final step of our salvation, you know what it is, right? That we leave this earthly, corrupt, Adamic nature and we be joined to the body of Christ, the glorious body of Christ. Spiritually, we're in the body of Christ. Physically, we're in the body of Adam. You get that? And we all hurt, we all get sick, we all have problems because of the sin nature. Some people say you lose your sin nature. Well, I haven't lost him. He shows up constantly, right? He is an enemy. Look over at Revelation chapter 21. We're talking about the purpose of God. Revelation in chapter 21. We talk many times about how the Bible starts in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, right? And that was in the very beginning. We read that in Genesis 1. You know, you got the earth and you got the heaven. That's what God created. And in here in 21 of Revelation, this is what John the Revelator saw, what God gave him. He said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So, what was John shown when he was transported out into the future of all time there? And the fulfillment of prophecy, the culmination of prophecy, what was it that John saw? John saw a new heaven and a new earth. Right? So, does God ever do away with heaven? No. It's going to be a new one. Amen. And there's going to be a new earth. Get it? So, everybody's just going to come back and we're going to occupy one sphere, just the earth. No, it's not what the Bible teaches. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Now, that's what I was taught. I was going to get on a horse, and I was going to ride back with Christ, and I was going to go be in an earthly kingdom, and that's where I was going to be. Well, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look at verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, 
We have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. So there's an eternal body. He uses heavens there because when it's all said and done, it won't be heavens, it'll be heaven. That's right. right? You got the layers of heaven right now, heavens, multiple. John wasn't looking for heavens, he was looking for heaven and a new earth, right? Back here, God created, and some Bible transcripts do this, they say God created the, hev the heavens and the earth. The King James Bible said God created the heaven on and the earth, right? So the multiplicity of heavens, you had the atmospheric heavens, you have what we call space, and then somewhere far above it all is where God lives, right? Well, powers and principalities take over that second heaven right there, right? But they're going to be done away with, and a new heaven, a new earth, the powers and principalities will be the church, the body of Christ. Right? The power and the principality of the earth will be those that go into this kingdom and here and so forth and so on. Eternity will be about heaven and earth. I've said it many times. I believe we'll have access to both heaven and earth at that time. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll still be in heaven. Amen? So with this whole thing, you get to see God has a purpose. God had a purpose for revealing to Paul different doctrine. Now listen, when you're going through the scriptures of the prophets, these people over here get physical blessings. They get rain for the crops. They get corn. They get new wine. They get bodies that are made whole. They get all this stuff. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. That's their doctrine. He said, give no thought for your life. What you're going to wear. What you're going to eat. He said, because your heavenly Father know already what you have need of. He's going to take care of you. What was Jesus telling them? Just keep following me. We get over here. I'm going to take care of all that stuff for you. They're physical blessings. But the Bible tells us in Ephesians 1 verse 3 that we have all spiritual blessings in Christ in heavenly places right so the church the body of Christ is a spiritual organism it is in Christ it's seated in Christ and it has the spiritual blessings that Christ has given it all right let's go, go to Ephesians in chapter 3 <coughs> Ephesians in chapter 3 Look at verse 8. <clears throat> to me, whom less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the what? Unsearchable. unsearchable. You know what that means? They were unsearchable. Now, I went to school for that. <laughs> I, I, I went to school for that. They were unsearchable. Right? You get me? Right. You couldn't find them in the scripture if you wanted to. You know why? They were a mystery in God. And they were revealed to Paul. And Paul is given to the body of Christ what God has done through Christ by Christ when he went to the cross, shed his blood, died, buried, rose again the third day for your justification, but also to your glory. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Look here now. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in who created all things by Jesus Christ. You see that? So there's unsearchable riches and so you have the unsearchable do you see there what he said? He created. He's the creator. God the creator purposed in himself before the world was unto our glory that there was going to be a spiritual body and about receiving Christ and all that he did on the cross we were going to be put into that body we were going to be sealed in that body seated in that body never ever to lose what God has given us Amen You see that? If you believe that you can lose your salvation it's simply because you know nothing about the doctrine of the mystery Alright, look here To the intent now Unto principalities and powers in heavenly places, he might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. You see that? So, what God has given us, the principalities and the powers of the earth or the, of the heavens, is what are we doing? We're making God's manifold wisdom known unto them. See? Now, everybody wants the angels to come down and minister to them. Hebrews, yeah? He gave you a garden name. 
Well, the principality and powers are getting the manifold wisdom of God from the church, the body of Christ. That's what the verse says. Now watch here, verse 11. According to eternal, what? Purpose. Which He purposed. Where at? Ah, man, you see that? God's purpose. The manifold wisdom that God purposed, and He purposed it in a person. Wow. Wow. That gets you out of religion right there, don't it? He didn't purpose it in a pastor, a pope, some religious figure. He purposed it in his son. Right? And what we have in him is the understanding of these unsearchable riches from the creator of God that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known unto the principalities and the powers of the heavens by the church, the body of Christ, which God purposed in Christ. Christ Jesus before the world ever was. That's stronger than a garlic milkshake, man. I'm telling you, that's good stuff. That really is good stuff. I, I mean, if you just get a hold of this stuff, listen, this stuff was hidden, man. God had it hidden. You, Isaiah didn't know this language. Isaiah didn't know this program. Jeremiah didn't know that program. They preached prophecy and gave prophecy as they received it to the nation of Israel concerning the earth. Amen. And it was hidden from them. And God reveals it to Paul for the body of Christ. And the body of Christ has been rejecting it all this time. That's sad, isn't it? All right. Look down at verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch verse 15, real, real, real close. Of whom the whole family, where at? In heaven and where at? You see the two spheres there, right? Well, you don't know nothing about the heavenly part until you get to Paul's writings because nobody in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were looking to lose gravity and go up and meet Jesus in the air. They were constantly looking for the Redeemer to return and sit up on the throne of glory, ruling over the tribes of Israel, the line of Judah. Yeah. Amen? So you know nothing about it till you come to this mystery language, which is what we have missed. Go over to Colossians real quick. Colossians in chapter 1. I'm, I got away from feelings a long time ago, but when I read these verses, I will tell y'all I get a certain feeling. <laughs> I, I just, it hits me inside where it counts, man. And my inner man receives that strength because this takes me out of the picture. I, there's no striving. There's no treadmill to get on. There's no working my way up to God. He's given me what he did by Christ, for Christ. Amen. Look here at chapter 1. If you could just ever give up on yourself, uh, you'll, you'll see what we're getting at here. Uh, look in verse uh, 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. You see the two spears. Visible and invisible. What would be the visible, folks? The things in the earth. What would be the invisible, folks? The things are in heaven. What are the churches living off of? The things in the earth. What they see. We talked about it this morning, that first session. They got those three senses tantalizes the eye, the flesh, and the pride of life. Right? That's what churches want to live off of. I have to see it. It has to be real to me. If y'all not getting excited, it ain't real. I'm excited. <laughs> I mean, I'm blown away by these verses to think that God Almighty, the Creator God Almighty, did all this to my glory, and all He asked me to do was receive it. Yep. Man. And I'm everything that He says I am. Look what He says here. Visible and invisible, whether it be thrones, principalities, dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by Him, and for him. You see that? And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Notice the power there. Not only is there unsearchable riches, not only is he the creator, not only is it the manifold wisdom of God, not only is it that was purposed in him, but you see the power. You see that? Look at that. Look at that verse again. By him. 
And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. It doesn't say exist, does it? It says consist. The power of God, by his word, all things consist. That's power. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and all things he might have what? You see that? Preeminence. Who's the preeminent one? Creator God, Jesus Christ, who went to a cross in the flesh. He went there in the likeness of sinful flesh as Adam, and he died and shed his blood and was buried and rose again the third day. And then he made a mystery appearance unto the Apostle Paul and gave this doctrine unto him to give the people like you and I to show us that God is the possessor of both heaven and earth, and he's going to reclaim both. He's going to reconcile both back unto himself. That's good. That's good. Maybe you want something better. I'm good with it, man. This is strong. Watch this. For it pleased the Father, verse 19, that in Him that in Him should all fullness dwell. Look there. There's your fullness. Folks, let me ask you this. If you've got the unsearchable riches of Christ, the Creator, the manifold wisdom of God, the hidden wisdom of God, the God of almighty creation purposed in Himself, if you've got the power of God, you've got the fullness of God, what do you need to do with religion? <laughs> Why did He say, taste not, touch not, handle not, all are to the perishing of the using? That's why He said, can you not live with what you see through the Scripture? Oh man, that is, that is it. And watch this. Look at verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. What does it say? By him I say whether they be what? Whether they be visible or invisible, right? Is God going to give up on heaven? Is God going to give up on earth? No. The God of this world is defeated, man. There's coming a time he's going to be cast out over there in the middle of the tribulation in Revelation chapter 12. He knows he has but a short time. There's going to come a time when he's tossed into a bottomless pit for a thousand years. He's going to be loose for a little season and then he's going to go out and get a bunch of knuckleheads to try to come up and take over the great city of God and he is going to be destroyed and put in the lake of fire where the beast, the beast and the false prophet are. I've read the book, man. I know how this thing ends. I said to a brother the other day all the stuff that's going on in the world and everybody get all gloomy about it. And they get, I, I, get to the scripture to give you comfort. I know what's going on. I, I know what God's doing. I have the comfort to know what's God doing. I'm not numb to it. I pray for those people. Amen. I pray. But I know what God's doing. And I'm not in a total wreck and sitting in front of the TV chewing my fingernails. I've got comfort of the scripture. I've got peace that God gives. Right? Because I know what God is doing. And look at that fullness of heaven and earth. All right, now I want you to turn over to Romans real quick. Romans, when you get there, look at chapter 8. <clears throat> look at chapter 8 and look at verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His what? Purpose. Did you know that God had called some people to His purpose out of the prophetic program? Did you know God is calling people by the gospel that Paul has? For the heavenly program. Now, people always look at that verse and say, all things are going to work out for me today. You know, it, it's going to be a bad day, but all things are going to work out for me. You know, there's, it's all good because and this is not what he's talking about. It, it, he's not talking about your, your sandwich is going to be a perfect way or your shoes are going to be a perfect way or what you drive or what you eat is going to be a perfect way. What God is talking about, all this stuff, everything that God has planned out, it's going to work. 
It's going to work to His will, and it's going to work to your glory, and has already. That's why God gave us this revelation of the mystery, that all of this right here is what God has planned for us. This church, the body of Christ, that's being ignored, the scriptures that get jumped over, that get torn out of the Bible, that are not there, they're not preached, they're not taught. But God, that glory that He gave you. Go back and look at Colossians in chapter 1. Colossians in chapter 1. Look at verse 25. <clears throat> he talks here about the church and he says, Whereof I made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fill the Word of God. If you leave Paul out, you don't have a fulfilled Word of God, do you? All right. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages, that's times, and from generations, that's people. But now it's made manifest to his saints. Now it's revealed. Right? right? Get it? Mm -hmm. Who did he use to reveal it? The Apostle Paul. The Apostle of the Gentiles. Amen. Now watch this. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among you Gentiles, which is Christ in you. What is it? Hope, Hope of glory. You remember what we taught last time, last week, when we went back and got the prophetic scriptures? We started with Abraham. We started with the Abrahamic promise, the Abrahamic covenant. We talked about the, uh, the circumcision, that if a Gentile there wanted to be a part of Israel, and those blessings that flowed from the head, they had to do what? Be circumcised and come up and bless Israel. Amen. You know what the Bible just said here in Colossians 1 and 27? None of that is necessary. Because now Christ in you, Gentile, the hope of glory, it comes without prophecy. It comes without a prophetic nation. It comes from the grace of God that was given unto Paul and revealed through the revelation of the mystery how that Christ died for our sins, our sins. The Gentiles now can be in the same body with a Jew, and a Jew can be in the same body with a Gentile. We both lose our distinction when we go in there, right? And we're all one in Christ by the gospel that Paul had without anything. Other than just receiving it by faith. Isn't that beautiful? Yep. All right. I'm going to finish on this verse. Back to Romans 8. And I like this verse because I get to laugh at the devil. <laughs> I love this verse because I get to laugh at the devil. Maybe y'all don't like laughing at the devil, but I do. Look at uh, chapter 8. And look at uh, verse 38. This, this is all because of who Christ is, by the way. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in? Christ Jesus. All right, let's go up here and look at that verse again. Remember when I told you over here is powers and principalities and all that? And Ephesians calls that in heavenly places, powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness. Read the verse again, 38. Paul said, I am persuaded that neither death Got it? Can't separate you. Nor life, it can't separate you. Nor angels, can't separate you. Nor principalities, the wickedness in heavenly places, the powers of the heavens or the earth right now cannot separate you. Nor powers, nor things present right now in this world, things that are present, they can't separate you. Nor things to come, nor anything in the world to come can separate you. Nor height, no matter how high it is, nor depth, no matter how deep it is, nor any other creature, any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you know why? Because God purposed the body of Christ before the world was. And everyone who has believed him on Him 
who have taken Christ by faith through grace alone and added nothing to it. When you did that, he baptized you by the Spirit, put you in this body, sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise, raised you up together, set with him in heavenly places. There are you seated, and nothing can take you out of that standing. Nothing can take you out of that position. No, 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 no. You're as good as done. I like them done, brother. Right? You know where I learned that? In the Bible. You know where we're at? Romans 2, Philemon. Yeah. You know what I know something about? The mystery. Yeah. You know what that did? Yeah. It gave me some understanding and all the other things. Yeah. You know what I do with them? I divide them. Yeah. I've said this, I'm going to say it again in closing. I don't care how good a teacher a man is. And there's some good ones out there. If he don't mention the difference between the body of Christ and Israel's prophetic program, and if he don't give you the gospel at least two times while he's teaching or preaching to you, he didn't really preach or teach a good message. The world, the dying world, needs the gospel. The professing world needs to come to the knowledge of the truth. And it's understanding that mystery right there. Right? Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful, so thankful for yet another day. Thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, for those of like-minded believers who have come to study the Word of God. We just give you all the praise, honor, and glory for the 13 books that you wrote to the body, but for the entire Word of God, because it's all inspired. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory for putting your Son on a cross, Lord, to die for our sins, shed His blood, buried and raised again the third day unto our justification. We give you all the honor and all the glory. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.